learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I'm back at the tiny house build again today and <laughs> oh, just aggravating. It's just aggravating. I, I can't do anything today. I'm, I'm running around now trying to lock the place down again. I'll get into that in a minute. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk about some of the things that's going on around here. Carolyn has been making huge progress on the pallet board wall. Really, every time I come in here, I'm just amazed at how much she's getting done. And she's cutting all the wood herself and doing it all by herself. It's just, I, I haven't helped with anything. I carry, I help her carry some wood in. We're gonna unload the truck today. The truck is still full of pallet wood. Might be able to see it out there in the window. But I wanted to address some things. I, I know when I make these videos, it aggravates some people that I read the comment section and I address the comments in these videos. But I think it does several things. One, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to teach people that you can do things on a limited budget, for example. We try to build this house on $500 a month that you can accomplish your dreams with limited equipment, limited tools, that uh, you don't have to be perfect at everything to still have something beautiful. Uh, this house is an example. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm learning as I go and I'm making mistakes. And you know, some mistakes I fix, some mistakes I don't. Uh, we haven't went over budget on any of the mistakes. Is it professionally done? Should I have done it differently? Well, I think that in some cases, people do things just to overkill things. Well, I've been doing construction for 45 years and I'm telling you, you're doing it wrong. You gotta do it this way or the place is gonna fall down. Well, yeah, in a hundred years, the place is gonna fall down. No, I, I get it, but I'm not gonna live that long and you know, I'm not gonna sell it. When I die, it'll just sit here and rot. There's just nothing that important that I gotta really overdo it. And I think this is why a lot of people can't accomplish their dreams is because they look at this massive picture and say, okay, well, I'll never be able to afford. I mean, think about this. It's a tiny house and I'm trying to build it for $5,000. If I were to listen to all the things that I'm supposed to be doing, this little piece of nothing, would probably cost 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars. Well, if I'm gonna do that, why not just go and look for a house? I bought a house one time just north of here for $26,000. It was a three bedroom house, thousand square feet, very nice house. Once I start looking into, you know, you gotta have this and you gotta have that, and I'm spending twice as much on lumber right now because of, of the economy. Lumber prices are through the roof. Your windows are used. You need new windows. Energy efficient. Well, I'm burning with wood heat. I'm insulating the best I can. I'm sealing the place up the best I can. I'm not gonna spend $100 on a window that's this big and not even half as tall. Or I can spend $40 and I can get this, these huge windows. I think if we just minimize what we're doing all around, Minimize the stuff we have, minimize the, our life, minimize our utilities. Life becomes so much more interesting. I can tell in the, in the comment section that the stress is there. That, oh, you don't have the right tools. Oh, you don't have the right equipment. The other thing is, is, is we nitpick everything to death. I was hanging a piece of trim. There's two pieces of trim right up here. There's the fascia plate and there's the eave trim. When I was cutting the fascia plate, I bet I had two dozen people tell me, no, that's not a fascia plate. <gasps> oh, no, what's going on? That is a drip edge. Oh my goodness. Well, I hate to tell you this, but when I bought this stuff, they called it, you know what? A fascia plate. If it's a drip edge, then maybe they would have called it a drip edge, but they called it a fascia plate. Now, in the video, I explained that the YouTube video that I looked at on fascia plates, in the YouTube video, the title said fascia plate installment, it had this bend at a 90 degrees. Well, this one is actually manufactured a little better than the one I saw. I don't know how well you're gonna see it, but what they did was they made this little lip down here. So when I was cutting it, it I couldn't cut it the way the YouTube video showed me, so I had to figure it out. 
And so many people told me, well, the reason you're not cutting it like the YouTube video is you bought the wrong material. That's a drip edge, not a fascia plate. Now, I recognize different parts of the country call things differently. My dad calls that a drip edge. And there's nothing wrong with it, calling it a drip edge, if you want to call it a drip edge. My point is, is there's no reason to get yourself all stressed out because something is called differently than what you expect it to be called. I would suggest that you take this as information that, oh, well, somebody is calling it something different than I am calling it. Maybe I should research this because, and you want to buy this, you're going to have to look for fascia plate, not drip edge. Now, something else I alluded to earlier was a lot of people think that you got to have the best equipment. In my childhood, I was always trying to do things with no equipment, using a pipe wrench as a hammer to build a clubhouse. I've tried to learn how to minimize the things I need and use other things for multi-purpose. So the other day I was cutting the fascia plate with my grinder. And I bet I got another two dozen complaints. You're using the wrong wheel. That's a grinder wheel. You're supposed to be using a cutting wheel. Well, first I would say you're trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. And one person actually said, your problem is, and I'm, I'm like, what problem do I have? I don't have a problem. It cut just fine. I did a great job. I'm very proud of it, very happy with it, and it works. And one person said, well, you need to go down to Harbor Freight and buy a package of them. They're really cheap, and that way you can do it properly. Well, I did do it properly. It's up there just like the YouTube video told me to do it. It's completely proper. I just used a different instrument, one that I can multitask with. The thing is, if I have to go to Harbor Freight, now I have a problem. I didn't have a problem, but now I got to go to Harbor Freight. That's a problem. Harbor Freight is 60 miles away, 120 mile round trip. It would be very expensive for me to go, and it takes up a lot of my day. Every time I have to leave this property, I lose money because I work seven days a week. I have to work during the day and so when i leave and i spend all day shopping i've just lost a lot of money and for what what did i really gain by going out and buying a specialty tool and i'll never use it again i will never use this package of grinding wheels ever again they'll just sit around in an area that i have no space to put things in i don't have a tool shed and that's by design it's minimizing my life. It's learning how to use things for multi-purpose reasons. I'm trying to show you a less stressful lifestyle. I'm trying to show you that you don't have to have the best equipment. You don't have to have the best knowledge. You don't have to have a huge storage area. You don't have to have a lot of money. And you still can accomplish so much with so little. I think it's actually easier I mean, I had the big lifestyle. I used to make lots of money. I never got to spend it. I was constantly bogged down by work, working 16 hours a day sometime. I mean, it was just a miserable lifestyle. Well, now I'm making less money. I actually have a significant savings account for my retirement. I have a nice emergency fund just in case something goes wrong. And I'm not stressed at all. It, it makes more sense to me not stressing about going and getting cutting wheels than it is just to sit here and say, well, what do I got? What can I use? Uh, tin snips, no, I don't have any tin snips. Do I wanna go buy tin snips? Why? You got a grinder right there, it works great. Now, I'm a l really aggravated. There, there is a job in the world, and I think everybody should apply for this job. It's a great job, but there is a job on this planet where you do not ever have to be right. As a matter of fact, 90% of the time, you can be wrong and still get paid a massive amount of money. And the world allows this type of behavior to continue. Even me, I, there's nothing I'm gonna do about it. Today, this person or persons told me something, they lied to me and I'm like, well, they were wrong, they lied, oh well, they do it all the time, what difference make? So I was supposed to have clear weather until Thursday, this is Sunday. So I quickly put on my metal roofing and I got to a point where I could 
install my chimney. That's what I was gonna do today. Wake up this morning at 4.30, check the weather, make sure everything's okay. I think it said 4% chance of rain. I mean, it says 4% chance of rain all the time. Check the weather again at six, and they'd raise it from like 4% to 10%. I mean, very little chance. So about seven o'clock, I checked again, and they got this radar down at the bottom of the app, and it's just filled with rain clouds. And it went to 80% chance of rain. How can anybody have a job where they don't even have to be right until the rain is actually on top of you? So I can't build anything today. Uh, I'm gonna be running around trying to get everything stored. I gotta get that pallet wood off the truck so it doesn't get wet. I gotta get the tarps back on the roof. So I'm hoping that I can inspire you to minimize your life, think smaller, because you will have a happier life. I guarantee it. Thanks for watching.